Hi, my precious people. Welcome to my channel. My channel is called The Truth, The Absolute Truth, which is found in the Word of God. I'm so delighted. I'm so happy this moment, this season of our life, when I'm introducing to us a new series, which I'm going to begin, which is very, very important in our life, in our society, for each and every one of us. I'm going to begin a series which I have entitled Family, which will take us a, a number of a, a long duration. We are going to stand about the family as we see the Bible describe the family. Family is very important because it is the first institution which was begun by God. So family was begun by God. It was the first institution. The, God began the family earlier than government, earlier than, than the church, earlier than all the institutions of the society. And where the family goes, the society goes. Where the family goes, the government goes. Where the family goes, the church goes. So family is so important. That is when now each and every person need to understand godly aspect of family. And all the problems which we are seeing today, I believe with the awe of my heart that if each and every person embrace the godly description of family, the godly aspect of family, the way God originally designed family to be, then all the world problems today will be solved. That is the only way. That is the only way in which we can stop all the suffering which we are seeing in the society today. When you look at the many children who are on the street, they are there because of, as of a result of families which have failed what is called dysfunctional family. And when do families fail? Families fail because of lack of knowledge, even as we find in the book of, of Osea, God declares that uh, my people perish for lack of knowledge. So many people today, they have abandoned the knowledge of the truth. That is godly knowledge concerning family. And they get their ideas from the people who themselves need to be taught. They get their knowledge of the family from the people who already are failures. The people without God are failures. We call them celebrities. We learn about marriage. We learn about families from the people who have uh, what is called uh, multiple partners. The people who are even in their 10th marriage. That is where many of, of the people are learning. But if we want our family to, to work, we must go back to the, to the designer, to the beginner of marriage. God, marriage it is God's idea. It was begun by God. It was started by God in the beginning. And we must go in the beginning. In the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verses 27, we see God, it, he is the one who began family. Because he created a man and woman, male and female, he created them. And all of them, Genesis chapter 1, verses 27, he created them male and female. And he created them both with his image and with his own likeness. And he blessed them. And he gave them power. And he, and he gave them this command. Be fruitful. Multiply. Fill the earth. Replenish it. And have dominion. So God is the one who initiated family. And that should be the beginning of the knowledge of family. That God is the one who began the family. And whatever God begins, it is good. Actually, after God creating everything, including the family, he said it, it was good. So whatever God does, it is good. So the suffering which we see today emanating from families, they must not, their origin is not from God. The origin is from the deceiver, from the enemy, who has stolen the mind of people, 
who has stolen the art of people, who has stolen the source of people, that they may not live a godly life, that they may not follow godly principles concerning their families. So, uh, welcome to this study. We are going to explore more. And I want to give us the breakdown of whatever we are going to discuss in this series. Also, you are free to, to comment and to give your suggestion on the areas which you want me to add. And also, you can give your own input. But your reference will be the word of God. So even as you critique, as you criticize, also you are free to criticize whatever I'm going to say here. My reference it is the word of God. Because the word of God endures forever. Uh, Isaiah chapter 40, verses 8 says, Then grass withers, the flower fringe, but the word of God remains forever. So the word of God it is valid today. It is as valid as it was when it was being written. And if it is followed, I believe our families will be healed. And we are going to have a society which is godly, a society which fears God, a society where God is, a society with no misfortunes, a society with no street children, a society with no divorces, a society with no suicides, a society with no corruption, a society with no immorality, a society with no worship of idols, a society with no people attacking other people in the name of dominion, in the name of superiority. That is the society we are going to have. So, in this study, we are going to look at the topic I've seen the series is family. And the family, we are going to see the importance of family. The importance of family in the society, in the government, in the church. That is what we are going to be exploring as for the Bible. We are going to see also the roles of the husband and wife in the family. And we are going also to learn the differences between females and males. We are going to see those differences. And how can that differences be turned into strength for one another. That understanding is key for couples to live together and to rejoice together. Also, we are going to look at parenting. We are going to see whether parenting can be delegated, whether it can be postponed or not. We are going to look also, we are going to explore and see in our society today who are bringing up our children. Is it a parent or somebody else? or the media, or the social media, or the house managers, we are going to see who should bring up the children. What is the role of parenting? It says, it, it says you only need to provide food. It says you only need to provide school fee. What is the godly role of parents in bringing up the children? And we are going to see where we have gone wrong as a society, and, we are, and where we are going to continue going wrong if we, if something is not done the effect which we are likely to to face so we are going to see the the damages which poor parenting has brought in 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 the society and in our community and we are going to see now what we can do as parents so that we can have the right parenting and at this time also we are going to see who should teach our children as they grow. Where should even our children learn about sexuality? Who should teach them about sexuality, human sexuality? Is it the Sunday school teachers? Is it the, the schools where we send them? Is it the TVs? Is it the magazines? Should they learn through discovery method? Should they learn from their peers? Who should teach them? And I will be asking you, where did you learn also concerning your sexuality? Did you learn from your parents? Did you learn from your peers? Did you learn from your teachers? Did you learn from biology books or from science books? Did you learn from TV? Did you learn through discovery? And what damage has it have in you? Would you like the same to reoccur to your children? 
Those are some of the questions we are going to, 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 to answer. It is very important. Because all what you know, it is what you have learned. All what I know, it is what I have learned. So teaching, particularly on human sexuality, it is a topic which is ignored, particularly by believers. Uh, most of the time, we talk less about sexuality, human sexuality, and we assume that we know. And we end up learning it from the wrong people and from the wrong sources. So we will be learning that in this series about human sexuality, who should teach our children? When should we start teaching them? Also, under that, under human sexuality, we are going to, to see uh, the importance of human sexuality. The importance of human sexuality. We are going to see also why did God create sex? Because sex was created by God. Why did he create it? Where should it be done? Who should do it? What does God ask to say concerning sex? What is the law of sex in marriage? And actually, sex, of course, according to the, to the, to the, to the, to the kingdom of God, it is meant for, for the people who are married. We are going to see its law. We are going to see. Why does God tell people to practice sex only in marriage? And we are going to see the reason for that in the Bible. It is very, very, very clear. And we are going to see the damage which abuse of that principle has done to our society today. The abuse of human sexuality. It has done damage to the society more than anything else which you can ever think of. Abuse of human sexuality has done so damage to the society more than even nuclear bomb, which the damage which it, it, it has ever done or which, which it can ever do. So that those, those are very, very important areas. Also, we are going to see the role of science and the technology in the family, in the children, in the parenting. So in this study, in this series of the family, we are going to explore the impact which the technology has in the families today, both between the spouses, both between the children and, the, and their parents, the effect that science and the technology has. Particularly, we shall be looking at the social media. What are the impact which the social media has to the couples, to the children? What are the effects which it has to their standards, to their, to their curriculum, when it is used properly? And when it is not used properly, we are going to be exploring that. Because currently, we cannot run away from social media. We cannot run away from science and technology. Because it is part and a parcel of our life. Children are unborn when, even before they start speaking, already they know how to browse. Already, already they know how to deal with the internet. It is, it is in us. Particularly to those who have young children, to those who are bringing up their children, science and the technology, social media, it is part and the parcel. Internet, it is part and the parcel of our life. So, these are the issues which we need to discuss as families, as parents, as people who are called by the name of God, and they will see x -Raw. And they will see how can we effectively make use of science and the technology. How can we effectively make use of science and the technology, even in the learning of our children, and also even to ourselves. We are going to explore all that by grace of God. And I believe before this series ends, our families will never be the same again. Because we are going to have the knowledge. Because by, and we are going to, to get the wisdom which is required. And the knowledge which is required. Because by wisdom, a house is built. A house here could be a family. It could be a a business. So we are going to explore all that. And even before we go to the study, it is important even when you are old, keep on checking the damage which social media has on your children, on yourself. How can you effectively make use of science and technology? The addiction which science and technology bring. Also, we are going to explore the many opportunities. There is a million and one opportunities 
which science and the technology has, which social media has, even to the life of our children who are growing, who are born in, in this era of advancement in science and technology. We are going to see how we can use science and technology to propagate godliness and holiness and righteousness and development even in the lives of our children. Actually, it is through the same that even I am able to reach to you through this study and through this channel. It is through science and technology I am able to reach to many people in the whole world. So we are going to see how even you, you can effectively uh, customize science and technology and become effective to your life, to your children, and how you can train your children on how to effectively, positively make use of science and technology for their life and for their generations to come. And we are also going to be exploring about the finances in the family. This is a gray area. Finances in the family. Who should control the money in the family? Should, should, should the spouses be aware of what their spouses are? For instance, should their wife have an access to my account? Should my wife know how much I have? Should my wife know uh, the password of my bank account or of, of my mobile phone? Should she be aware? Is it wise for my wife to be aware of the resources I have, the project which I do? Is it wisdom? Is it quite in order for my wife to know all my secrets? Those are some of the questions we will be answering. And of course, the answer I shall provide, it is as per the Bible. And I believe it is the best answer. Because God always has the best for you and for me. We are going to see also how soon the family finances be, be managed. How soon the family finances be managed. Who should be in control? Who should be in charge? We shall be exploring all this. And most importantly, we shall be looking also at dating. Dating. Courtship, dating, courtship, love, engagement, and marriage. So we shall be looking at this is this is very important because even if you are you are a parent now, you have children. Your children will come at a time now when you, they will start uh, having friendship. They will start the journey which is called dating. They will start which develop into into courtship, which develop into engagement, and then marriage. We are going to see how can that successfully be done without atom breaks. It is possible for you to date. It is possible for you to have courtship. It is possible for you to, to have an engagement and marry without hurting other people, without also being at broken. It is possible if you have knowledge if you have understanding, if you have Christ in you, if you do it in God's way, and if your expectations are upon God, it is possible. I know many may not agree with me from that perspective, from that uh, perspective, but it is true. It is possible. All things are possible. But at times we have been at broken. At times we have at broken others because we didn't do it in Godly way. And that is why I am here. So that what happened to you will not be repeated to your children and to your great, great grandchildren. You need to get knowledge. You need to get wisdom. You need to get understanding. So that, and if you are there and you are a young person, you are ready now to start dating, this, is, this channel is for you. You need to get this knowledge. I, I assure you, if you get this knowledge, you will thank God that uh, you got the knowledge, you got the understanding, because you will have no regret. A life with no regret. It is very fulfilling for you to have a life with no regret in, in your future. That you can stand and glorify God even, even in years to come. That you are not an instrument of breaking other people's heart. Also, you are to not also be broken when you get this knowledge, when you get this understanding and you will rejoice 
even with the wife of your youth when that time comes, or with the husband of your youth when that time comes. So today, we see people playing games with the relationship because they have no knowledge. They lack knowledge. They lack understanding. And consequently, we see them perishing. The word of God is very clear. My people are destroying, destroyed for lack of knowledge, for lack of understanding. And those who are still, uh, we are also going to be considering. Now, because of, of, the, of the courtship, of the engagement, after dating, after marriage, you are in the family. We will also be exploring on the divorce. The divorce. The divorce is real in our society today. Actually, statistics show that uh, more than 50% of Christian marriage, they end up in divorce. So if you are there and you are not married, I'm not threatening you. But if you have no knowledge of what you want to do, there is a possibility that you are married, you will end up in divorce because of lack of knowledge. It is not, we are going to see now what is God's perspective on divorce. What has gone to what has God asked to do, to do with the divorce? How can you avoid divorce in your marriage? How can you how can you avoid divorce in your marriage? What are the effects of divorce to you? And to your spouse and to your children, in case you have the children, what are the effects? But most importantly, uh, we are going to look at how can we prevent divorce from our marriage? Because divorce is so bad. Actually, divorce is worse than death. Divorce is worse than death. Death is something better compared to divorce. If you think this is not true, ask the divorcee. There are so many in our society today. Ask them. And they will tell you that they went through hell. Outwardly, they may, they may pretend that uh, it is okay. It is the end of the day. When they are speaking, we see people even in the, in the social media uh, making divorce to be something the order of the day. But they want to tell you Man is a spirit. He possesses a soul. And that soul lives in the body. The body may pretend, may act that it was easy, that it is okay. But the person, that is the spirit of that person. I, I want to assure you, it is not okay with them. It is very, 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 very traumatizing. It is only one person who can cure a person who has gone through the experience of divorce. That is Christ and Christ alone. He is the only person who has the power of curing the art which has gone through the experience of divorce. So that is why I am here to share with us how we can prevent divorce in our families, in our marriage, in our society. And divorce causes a lot of challenges to the people who undergo those experiences. My prayer is that. Uh, those who are not married, even before you went into marriage, you will, you, will, you will allow God to lead you and you will get wisdom and understanding. For us who are married, we shall seek wisdom, knowledge and understanding from our maker so that we may keep the vows of the marriage which we made to our spouses. No matter the type of marriage which you have, no matter, no matter the type of covenant which you have entered, even if the trees were the witness, God was also there as a witness to your marriage, regardless of who was your witness. Maybe it could be only the grass which was there to witness your covenant. But God honors that and he values it. And God ate divorce. So we are going to see and we are going to explore into details why does God ate divorce? Because God declares in the book of Matthew chapter 7, 19, that I ate divorce. So God ate divorce. And God created Genesis chapter, we are going to be seeing in the book of Genesis that uh, God created male and female. And when they marry, Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, the two become one flesh. And now, Jesus declared that 
when God has put two together, there is no person who should put them asunder. So we are going to be exploring all that as God help us. We are also going to see the role of man in your family. Actually, just to mention here that man, every man is the end of the family. You are the priest of your family. It is your responsibility to teach your family the word of God. All men are teachers by divine. You are ma- you are manufacturer and design you. He formed you and he first showed you as a teacher. To teach your family the word of God. So it is your responsibility for you to teach your family the word of God. We, we shall be exploring that. And the other roles of a father, of a man as a teacher. The purpose. So one of the purpose for you as a male person, it is to teach the word of God to your family. So the pastors and the other people, they play what is called complementary role. They complement what you do. But your primary role, it is for you to teach your children the word of God. Both your wife and your children, it is your role as a man. So you must know the word of God. Even if your wife is a pastor, when it comes to the God's arrangement, even if your, your wife is the archbishop or the bishop, when it comes to God's arrangement, you are the priest of your family. And God has called you together with your wife to be joint co-heir. So you must know the word of God. So we are going to see the need for male man, the need for the male man to be in the presence of God so that God can father him, so that God can mentor him, so that he can be that which God created him to be, so that he can be able to father his family. So men should be in the presence of God so that God can prepare them, so that they can be ready to be fathers. We are going to see also the meaning of a father. Who is a father? A father is not a title. A father is, is not just a name. Because as you realize, even animals, even monkeys, for instance, they sire their, their own. So being your father, it is not a pro- producing the, the seed, giving the sperm, donating the sperm. That is not what father means. So we are going to see the true meaning of a father. When God calls you a father, God himself he is the father. He is the father of all creation. So in this series, we are going to explore the meaning of our father. What does it mean to be a father? What does it mean to be a husband? What does it mean to be a godly father? What is your role? What is your purpose? We are going to consider that. So most importantly, we shall be measuring more on men because men are at the end and they are the foundation. And if in this series, as we shall be exploring about the family, our most uh, point of focus, it will be men, male, my fellow men, wherever you are, this is the standard for you. This is the channel for you because we shall be exploring who we are as God created us to do. Actually, I began by saying where the, the society go, the fa- where the family go, the society go. Where the church go, sorry, where the family go, the church go. Where the government go, where the family go, the government go. In the extension, or to the big extent, it is men, because men are the foundation. Everything succeed or force on men. Men, we cannot blame women. You are the head. Men, female cannot be better than men. One single man has capability of destroying the whole world. And at the same time, one single man has the capability if he knows who he is of saving the whole world. And actually, when God wants to do something in the whole world, he does not look to crowd. He looks for a man who is ready to be used of God. So we are going to see the role of men. Men as the pillars. Men as the anchor of the family. We are going to be exploring that. We shall be looking at manhood. We shall be learning, exploring on the principles of manhood. 
principles of men as the anchor and the purpose of men as the foundation of the society, of the family. Because everything begins from the family. Whether it is an institution, whether it is a church, it begins from the family. And we are going to see that if it feels that family, it does not work anywhere else. It begins from the family. Where if you fail in your family, you are found everywhere. So my dear men, wherever you are, you are precious things. Your wives and your sorry, your wife and your children are the precious things which you should take care of. And how, how, how should you take care of them? It is through the knowledge, it is through the understanding, it is through the wisdom which you get from the word of God. And I repeat, if it does not work in family level, it does not work anywhere else. Because everything begins from the family. So welcome and let us learn together. And I request us to comment. You can also share the area which you would like us to do. So this is the project which God has given me and I know God is faithful. Whatever he has begun, he is going to bring it into fulfillment. You are welcome and I know God is going to order our step day by day. We are going to trust in his leading, in his teaching because God is a wonderful teacher. He has given us his Holy Spirit who is a wonderful counselor. He is the one who, is, who will be teaching us. And as we learn, I pray that God will help us, that we are not only going to be mere hearers of, of the word of God, but we shall be people who put the word of God into practice so that it may have meaning in us. In Jesus' name, you are welcome as we learn together and as we grow our families, our societies, our churches, our society, our country, our continent, and the entire globe. In Jesus' name, you are welcome. We stand it together. Amen.